Okay, everybody, we are going to get going with Ring Partners University's second lesson, the difference between CPA and paper call. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you so much for joining me. I know everybody has a uh, busy schedule and, and uh, constantly looking for, for new ways and new information to try and do better in our industry, and I am absolutely thrilled uh, to, uh, to be able to bring this uh, presentation to you. I certainly hope it's helpful. Uh, just coming here from, uh, from our Ring Partners studios in uh, beautiful Victoria, British Columbia. Uh, it's sunny, and I won't describe the weather too much because you will all be very jealous and start to resent me before the presentation has even started. So that's not a good way to begin. I want to make sure I'm in your guys' good books. So I uh, hope everybody's ready. Here we go. Okay, so Henry, you're asking, what do you mean by CPA and paper call? And one of the biggest challenges, actually, I find when I'm training new people to the industry, you know, either with uh, some of our partners or even internally with, uh, with new ring partner hires, is that there's a lot of lingo that gets thrown around. Now, that's, that's you know, part of the course for really any industry. But what's, what's particularly challenging with ours is that there's a lot of acronyms and also uh, synonyms, so i.e., uh, or not necessarily synonyms, sorry, but uh, there's a lot of different uh, terminology and you've got you know, three or four different phrases meaning the same thing. So it's really important that I'm clear about what I'm talking about when I mean CPA and pay per call. So CPA, what I mean by that, is a cost per action, and really what it boils down to is it's an advertisement on the internet where a distribution partner is going to place that either on you know, their website or you know, bid on search or send an email, and that is going to convert for them, i.e. the distribution partner is going to get paid if the user submits something. It has to be an action. So either they submit their email or they put in their zip code or they put in their credit. There's a number of different ways that they can do it, but essentially somebody has to fill out a form or fill out a field and hit enter. There's a number of different you know, ways you can toy around with that. You know, there's first page submits. Um, you know, some of the higher paying CPA, uh, CPA offers rather will require you to go uh, you know, maybe a second page or a third page and you know, fill out additional information like maybe your address or your phone number, something like that. So really it's all about sort of getting information and really what you're doing is getting that lead for the buyer. So that's really what I mean by CPA. There's a number of different, uh, you know, methods out there. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you are all, you know, I, I get, I was trying to get into the mindset of people watching this webinar, and as soon as I, as soon as I say something that maybe, you know, misconstrued, I could say them like, oh, Henry, what are you talking about? That's wrong, and, and I appreciate that. But uh, for now, we're just going to focus on, on the CPA model. So, you know, if you want to talk about, uh, you know, CPM or, or CPS, hey, that's great. Um, but we probably won't be discussing that too much here. So the history with CPA is that, as far as I can tell, I don't know if there are too many internet historians. Uh, that would be quite a job, hey? Uh, but in terms of history, CPA has been around for a lot longer than pay-per-call. Um, you know, I don't think there's an actual date as to when it got, you know, got big. Uh, but certainly in the early, uh, the early aughts, I think that's what we're calling that decade now, the aughts. Uh, but in the early, you know, 2000s, 2000, 2001, 2002, around there is really where, you know, internet marketing started to take off. And CPA certainly was one of the, uh, you know, some of the, one of the leading causes for that. Um, you know, so, I mean, it's been established, um, you know, there's a lot of tricks of the trade, you know, a lot of good campaigns have come and gone. Uh, people will tell you that have been into it for a long time. Uh, you know, this business is fluid. It changes at a million miles an hour. So what I do want to you know, mention real quick is that I do have a CPA background. I work for uh, an affiliate network uh, specializing in CPA for just about six years. But that was also a while ago. So things may have changed. So I'm sure many of our partners have been running you know, both paper call and CPA offers. And they may tell me, you know, Henry, your information is, is horribly outdated. And you may be right. What I'm trying to do is give you sort of a a grand idea, sort of a general idea behind the basics of CPA and paper call and why one may be better than the other for one service and one might be better or different for another service, so keep that in mind. Paper call, on the other hand, so CPA, we have the cost per action. Paper call is almost entirely duration based. So people don't necessarily have to fill in any information at all. Really, it's about getting them to dial that phone number. 
So it could be anywhere. It could be on a website. It could be on a Google call only ad. It could be in an email. It, it could even be on a you know a radio or TV show or maybe a webinar. You never know. As long as people can either hear or see that phone number and are capable of calling in, and if it goes over a certain duration, average in, on our you know with Ring Partner, average duration is usually anywhere from eh, 90 seconds or so, maybe 90 seconds to two minutes, kind of around there. If it goes past the duration, then our distribution partner is paid the agreed upon rate. And that really is the major difference. CPA, you have people filling stuff in over, you know, with a form or an email or whatever. Paper call, somebody has to be calling in themselves. Paper call is still relatively new. Uh, we definitely see more and more interest as, uh, you know, as time goes by. Uh, that's really evident actually at the trade show. So, uh, places like LeedsCon and Affiliate Summit and things like that, we're certainly seeing an increased interest in paper call. But really, it's only been around for, I would say, probably less than five years. I'm sure somebody tried it out earlier than that, but five years ago, yeah, maybe even maybe even you know three years ago, is when people really started to dive in and there started you know networks and marketplaces started popping up. So paper call is kind of the new kid in town, and uh, and as we all know, new is cool. And, and sexy and fun sometimes. Okay, so let's briefly go over the process. And I've done a, you know, talked a little bit about CPA's, you know, process and things like that. So we won't get, you know, too too much into it. Uh, but I did want to mention, you know, basically how it works. And I know that sounds, you know, really basic. But honestly, what I find helps is just kind of visualize the flow of the user, and that will help me either you know, understand a new model or explain it to maybe a business partner or a client. And if you have a better, you know, a better sort of verbiage and understanding of the industry, you're going to be able to look at it from a macro and a micro level, and it will help you, I assure you. So what, like I mentioned before, CPA usually involves some kind of form, submit, email, or zip, something like that. I'm sure this is different from when I was when I was in it. I'm sure something has changed, but basically, once that is submitted, there will be a line of code that fires, and we used to do uh, pixel-based tracking, and that will pick up the conversion. So the idea is that you know distribution partners will get their own you know unique link from a network, and uh, they'll you know they'll place that on you know their, their landing page or or whatever. And basically, what we were trying to do is get that that little pixel essentially to fire. That's kind of how that tracking works. And again, we can go into, you know, details about, you know, first, second, third form submit, or maybe they have to, you know, enter their credit card or something like that. But basically the system needs to recognize that a potential user has satisfied the criteria. So first name, last name, phone number, name of firstborn child, uh, favorite color, whatever. And then the system will say, hey, network, uh, Bob McGee, uh, got a user. He got somebody to fill out this form, and we know it's Bob McGee because Bob McGee has his own unique tracking. Link. That's basically how that works. Uh, it's a little tricky with CPA. Um, the, sort of the nature of it is that there's there's really 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 heavy volume, but sometimes it's hard to tell where it's coming from. Uh, also things like uh, you know time zone differences and and cookies and there's a, there's so many different variables involved with the code that sometimes a, you know, a lead may occur, pixel may fire, and then it might get taken away uh, you know, due to a scrub or something like that. And, and scrubbing, you know, obviously we want to make sure we don't do any of that, uh, but it does happen from time to time. Paper call the flow is a little easier to understand in my opinion. Uh, so if I'm a potential caller, uh, let's say I need a plumber, uh, and you know, by the way, if, if, uh, if people are needing a plumber, they need a plumber yesterday. They're not sort of casually being like, well, yeah, let's get a plumber in here a week from now. I've got a party coming up, and yeah, we'll just get them to check out the pipes. There's very few, you know, sort of routine maintenance calls with plumbers. Usually it's, help, I need a plumber now. So I need a plumber. I, you know, search on Google or, you know, I look on, uh, you know, maybe somebody sent me an email or, or whatever, and I see a phone number. It says, hey, call for a local plumber right now. Fantastic. That's easy to understand. I'm searching for a service. I'm going on the internet, which I'm sure many of you have heard about by now, I would think, and I see a phone number. Perfect. I'm going to dial that number, and it's then going to hit an IVR, and this essentially is a recorded message before the, you get to the service. This is to filter out any undesirable callers, uh, maybe prank callers, or maybe they've dialed the wrong number 
Um, or maybe, you know, they're, they're looking for, uh, you know, uh, roofing and they've accidentally called plumbing. So the idea of the IVR is to identify what the service is and to prime callers so they know what they're calling in about. So the IVR might say something like, hello, thanks for calling uh, Sally's Plumbing. Uh, if you are interested uh, in a plumber or need a, you know, need a plumber now or if you have an emergency, please press 1. Uh, if you have dialed this number by accident, please press 2. That's an example of an IVR. And the cool thing, I should mention this on the, on the side here, Ring Partner, we can allow our partners, distribution uh, partners rather, to create their own IVRs. If you have an idea for a campaign, maybe you really like uh, you know, a certain script you've written or you, know, you want to test something out, maybe you want to have multiple IVRs and, and test out which one works best, that's absolutely fine. Just let us know. We can record it on our end, but vitally, this is really important, make sure you do a test call on the campaign yourself first. If I pitch you this plumbing campaign, maybe I'm pitching it to my friend Ted, and I say, Ted, you got to try this plumbing campaign. It's great. And Ted, you know, tests it out. And uh, Ted's like, you know, Henry, I, I called the, the number and nobody picked up. Okay, well, there may be a different, you know, number of different reasons for that. Maybe, you know, we called out of hours or maybe, you know, uh, you know, the plumber, maybe it was a holiday or maybe, you know, the plumber, you know, for some reason can't handle all the calls we're sending them. It's really important that that flow is unblocked. We need to make sure that people are always going to get a response. And you, as, as publishers, need to make sure it's going to a live agent. Voicemails are no good. Usually people can leave voicemails in about 30 seconds, and even if it's a good lead, you're not going to get paid for that. So it's really important that we make sure that it's always working really well. So even if you have been running uh, you know, a campaign for quite some time, I would recommend test calling it once in a while. Things may have changed. They may have taken an extended lunch. Uh, you know, there may be a change to the campaign that we haven't told you about yet. Uh, there may be a holiday. There may be, you know, a new product that you think something, you know, that people will be interested in, uh, you know, anymore in the old one. So there's a number of different reasons why, but that's essentially the function of the IBR is to filter out people that may not be good leads to you after all. Once they make it through, once we connect them or rather transfer the call to the buyer, that's when the clock starts ticking. That's when the duration begins. And there's a difference between duration and connect duration. You guys will see that on the Ring Partner uh, stats once in a while. So a connect duration is what we're looking for. A connect duration of something like 90 seconds, we need them to be transferred to the buyer. And as soon as they're transferred to the buyer, that's when the connect, connect duration begins. If somebody calls in and they get either stuck on the IVR or maybe they've butt dialed it or something. I, you know, I gotta say, I, I'm a little embarrassed. I, uh, I accidentally butt dialed my sister last night uh, at about, I think I was going to bed around 11:30, and uh, she was not happy because I woke her up. So butt dials do happen, and maybe they get stuck in the IVR and they don't go anywhere. You might see a connector rate or a duration rather of like two minutes, and you might say, Henry, why, why did, why did this happen? How come I didn't get paid? It's because it's not the two minutes of the connect duration. It's just two minutes of the, of the uh, of, you know, the duration of them getting stuck in the IVR. So they actually need to be connected in order for that to work. So I hope that explains the, the flow uh, nicely, because now we're going to go on to creatives. And I know creatives is a beast. I probably get asked 10 times a day about creatives for our campaigns, and rightfully so. Creatives, in a way, are, are your ammunition. They're really your uh, sort of meat and potatoes as to how you're going to, you know, allure potential callers or potential, you know, submitters. I don't want to call them submitters. It sounds like an insect or something. Potential CPA customers uh, to put in their, you know, email address or, or zip submit or whatever. Creatives are king. Really, really important. So for CPA, uh, it's, it's almost everything. It's absolutely essential. So you'll have, you know, our partners making, you know, very elaborate landing pages, with very nice graphics, very professional. Uh, it's not 1996 anymore. Uh, people, if they see a landing page that looks like it's from, you know, GeoCities or something like that, they're probably not going to trust it, and they're probably not going to submit anything because it looks a little, you know, may look shady or it just doesn't look like very high quality. So that's why landing pages are really, really important with CPA. People have to feel comfortable when they're on the page. They have to feel like they're at a, you know, an established, trusted business, or at least a person running the site. They have to trust. And an easy way to gain that trust 
obviously, you know, you're a trustworthy individual, but to show them, you have to make sure the landing page looks good. Uh, other things like banners and email creatives, also essential. Um, we get this question, you know, or I used to rather all the time, you know, can we get some new banners? Uh, how come this, you know, campaign doesn't have any creatives? So there's a, you know, a definite, uh, you know, battle going on where sometimes buyers will, you know, provide creatives. Uh, sometimes they will, sometimes they won't allow distribution partners to make their own with CPA offers. It's a real, it's, it's a very tricky, it's a very fine line, you know, finding that landing page that is going to satisfy absolutely everybody. And of course, there's no guarantee that, uh, you know, the buyer is going to like, you know, our partner's landing pages. So if that's up to us to make sure we, you know, relay that information to you so you don't waste a lot of time making a website, you know, for, you know, purple hats when really the buyer only wants orange coats. It's really, really important. I don't think we have an orange coat campaign, by the way. That was just an example. Uh, paper call, I would say overall is probably maybe a little bit less creative focus, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. I mean that if somebody is already hunting around for a plumber or uh, you know student loan or insurance or something like that, they don't necessarily need to be persuaded by you know a flashy you know intro to a landing page or you know banner or or something like that. The service in their mind is already needed. They don't sort of need to be reminded that their roofing needs. You know, fixing, or maybe they do, but you know what I mean, right? Like people are already uh, keen to solve a problem before they go searching, right? They're not all, you know, sort of, you know, if somebody, and trust me, being a former student loan person, they're always on the back of the mind. So basically what I mean by that is that there's less creative focus. There's less need for really flashy landing pages. There's less need for very elaborate banners. What we find is that the best creatives that work with paper call are simple and they're uh, relevant to the campaign and the phone number is prominently prominently displayed. That's basically it. We don't need, you know, an encyclopedia worth of information. Uh, we don't need, you know, really sexy looking banners with a whole bunch of colors. We don't need all that with paper call. Really people are going to be looking for their service that they need, i.e. a plumber. All they need is to go somewhere, you know, where, you know, it's going to give them a brief amount of content Hey, is your plumbing backed up? Do you need to fix something? Do you need one now? Call this number. That's basically it. You know, our partners might throw in, you know, a couple of images here and there to sort of give people the, the indication that they've hit the right place. Um, pictures are always good. Visual aids are always good. Uh, but there's, I would say they're less uh, necessary for a campaign to succeed uh, compared to CPA. And again, there's always, uh, you know, exceptions. Uh, there's always going to be, you know, a CPA offer that doesn't really need all that much creative, uh, you know, genius to make work. Likewise, there's paper call offers that will need, uh, you know, creatives to make work. I'm more speaking in a general tone. And that's sort of what I'm going for here. Okay, quality. This is huge. Without quality, there would basically be no, no affiliate marketing, no, uh, you know, no paper call marketplace, no ring partner. Quality is absolutely essential. And both are increasingly important with both models. As people get more, you know, more familiar with you know, the Internet and they feel more comfortable uh, you know, clicking on ads and, and ordering things and calling in and stuff like that, um, people are you know, becoming much more aware of you know, what a good ad looks like versus what a bad ad looks like. Likewise, buyers are getting, you know, wiser about what's a good lead and what's a bad lead. And I know that's really, really important. I know it's really difficult for our distribution partners is that oftentimes, you know, they won't know if they're sending, you know, good quality or bad quality. It's really up to us, ring partner, to tell you guys how the quality is. So going to CPA, CPA is probably a little harder for buyers to tell, you know, at a quick glance. Um, you know, usually CPA has a larger amount of volume. It's just easier to get people to, you know, maybe fill out a form for certain things like, you know, downloads or a toolbar or health products or something like that. And you're going to, you know, get people to just, you know, it doesn't take that much energy to just, you know, type a few things on a keyboard and submit it. Um, it can work. I mean, there's, there's really good quality and usually buyers have a good indicator of what good quality will mean. You know, how much money did they spend in the registration path? Um, did they actually order the product or did they cancel their membership right away? But it sometimes takes a little bit longer to tell. And again, if you guys, you know, all you guys see are, you know, stats and numbers, 
you don't actually, you know, you don't know how every single lead is working out for the buyer. Why would you? You don't work for the buyer. Uh, paper call, I find, is a little easier to tell quality simply because we can listen to many of the calls on our end. And this is really, this is a really important tool to, you know, tell how quality is. Um, it's also easy to tell, you know, maybe, you know, uh, you know, something like, you know, com from a compliance standpoint, if, you know, somebody is saying, you know, oh, we think, you know, that these, these calls are low quality, you know, instead of saying like, well, they're not signing up, that doesn't really give a good indication as to why users aren't signing up. Uh, maybe they're not signing up, you know, on the form because, you know, maybe the field is confusing or maybe the, the button isn't very prominent or maybe they just don't like the service, but it's hard to tell, right? We don't actually have a lot of user feedback there. With paper call, it's pretty easy to tell. If I listen to a call and I, you know, I see a trend, maybe uh, people are saying, you know, they're looking for, you know, a different kind of plumbing. Maybe they're looking for, you know, uh, you know, something like septic, um, you know, or they're looking for, uh, you know, uh, their hydro bill or something like that. If I listen to them speak, it's a pretty clear indication as to what they're looking for. I can then relay that information along to you and you'll be able to adjust your promotion accordingly. It's also really hard to fake voices. Uh, we do unfortunately get, you know, the odd, uh, you know, the odd publisher or distribution partner that calls it and thinks they can scam the system. Doesn't happen very often, but once in a while we'll, we'll, you know, we'll get somebody trying it out and it's, they're not great actors. It's pretty clear to, to hear that they're the same person, you know, either saying the same thing or they've told all their friends to say the same thing. No, that's not what we're looking for. It's bad quality. It's pretty easy to tell. All right, let's go on to conversion rates. All right, just a minute here, guys. Oh, we already got lots of good questions. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, so great question. Uh, just got a couple here asking if, uh, if this will be recorded. I am recording this presentation, uh, so we will be able to uh, you know, show you guys that. And I believe the PowerPoint will also be made available as well. So look for that uh, information at the end of, uh, of the webinar, and I'll go over where you can find that. But yeah, absolutely, it's being recorded. This information will be made available to you guys if maybe you fell asleep. Uh, I, I understand. It's, it's hard to stay awake. You know, Thursday morning, we're almost at the end of the week, and you got to listen to me prone on and on. I get it. I get it. No problem. It will be recorded. So this is really important data, conversion rates and EPCs. Uh, this is basically, you know, the lifeblood for you guys. You, you guys can't tell, you know, how a campaign is performing unless you have the data, unless you have clicks, unless you have conversions, conversion rates, EPCs, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, it's, you know, fine and, you know, fine and well if you want to, you know, you know uh, think with your gut and say like, oh, I think this campaign is going to do really well. But numbers don't lie. Numbers do not lie. They are tangible data that you can use to make decisions that will affect your life and your income. So it's really important. With CPA, the conversion rate is usually considered with conversions and clicks here. So if I have somebody clicking on my campaign 10 times and I get two conversions, uh, that would be a conversion rate of 20%. A tricky question I get, oh, someone's asking it right now. That's great. What is a good conversion rate? That's a really good question, and it's very hard to answer. There really isn't sort of a uniform good conversion rate. It really does depend on the offer. And I'm not, I'm not laughing because it's a bad question. On the contrary, I'm laughing because it's a good question, but it's so difficult to, to explain. Um, you know, you could have, you know, something like, a, you know, a biz -off offer might have, you know, a conversion rate of, you know, something like 20 or 30 percent. And then you might have a, a, you know, a toolbar or a download, you know, with a 40 percent conversion rate. Is that good for either? I don't know. You have to look at it, you know, compare it to other data. How is it doing compared to other campaigns? How is the campaign converting compared to yesterday or a week ago or even a month ago? That's really what you should be looking at. You shouldn't sort of have something in your mind saying, uh, I like the number 20. Henry said 20% is good. I need a 20% conversion rate to make this work. you got to look at it a little deeper. Absolutely compare it to previous day's performance. What's your conversion rate compared to yesterday? Oh, it's down a little bit. Is that because I changed my creatives or did the buyer change something on their end? Or is it maybe it's a Saturday and people just aren't, you know, on the Internet as much on the weekends? Something to consider when you're looking at conversion rates. EPCs or earnings per click is the revenue you've generated divided by the number of clicks. And that actually is probably a better indicator of performance compared to just conversion rates. Higher paying offers will have lower conversion rates 
but much higher EPCs. And you, of course, it's very important to you because you're going to be spending money, you know, bidding on keywords. You're going to be spending resources and time making landing pages and all this, you know, all that kind of creative stuff. So it's good to, you know, sort of look at both indicators for performance and make a decision. Is the EPC, you know, high enough for you to keep going? Great. Is it too low? Maybe too low. What do I do? Do I change my creative? Do I change campaigns? Do I, you know, ask my affiliate manager for a rate increase because I can't make it work otherwise? There's a number of different strategies you can use to combat that, but it's really important that you give it a good test. Uh, once in a while, we'll get, you know, some partners that, you know, might have a couple of calls and no, or, you know, clicks and no conversions, and they'll say, well, the conversion rate stinks. I know it's hard because the longer you wait, you know, the more you may be risking, but you want to give it more than a couple of clicks or calls. You probably want to try and get a good sample set or a good data set before you jump to conclusions. How much of a data set is up to you? Because I understand it's your money that you're spending to try and promote this offer, but keep that in mind. Paper call, the conversion percentage, eh, roughly the same. It's the number of paid calls versus raw calls. And I already have a question saying, what is a raw call? Fantastic question. So a raw call is absolutely anybody who phones the number that you have posted, that you've put on your you know, call only ad or your website or whatever. That phone number that we give to you, by the way, is unique to you. Anybody calling that number is going to generate what we call a raw call. Or if you want to compare it to CPA, a click. If you have somebody that goes over the connect duration, that would be classified as a paid call. And I should mention real quick on CPA, when a conversion, I mean, I mean a conversion, um, somebody's entered their email address or their zip submit on the first page or whatever, that's a conversion. So a paid call is mostly the same. It's if the campaign has converted, if the person has stayed on the call for longer than two minutes or 90 seconds or what have you, that would count as a paid call because you're getting paid. So if I have 10 raw calls on a campaign, let's say 10 people have phoned in, Nah, eight people weren't all that interested, but two people did go over the connect duration. That's going to be a 20% conversion rate to you. Make sense? I hope so. Earnings per, now this is handy. Finally, we have something where I don't have to change up the lingo. EPC in this case, we just call earnings per call. It's the revenue you've generated divided by the number of raw calls. And again, this is important data for you. You're spending money, you're spending time, you're spending resources trying to promote this campaign. So you need to figure out, you need a couple of, uh, you know, statistics to tell you if it's working out or not. And again, as always, you want to compare it to previous performances and you want to make sure you get a good set of data before you make any decisions. That much is for sure. Okay. Uh, I've got a really good question here that I'm going to mention out right now because that is a good one. Uh, what factors are considered uh, when affiliates ask Ring Partner for a pay bump on an offer? Fantastic question. I'll tell you the number one factor we are looking for, and I, and I cannot stress this enough, guys. The number one factor we're looking for is potential volume increase. If a partner asks me for a 10 cent bump on an offer and that's it, that's all they say, I'm likely not going to give it to them. We need to, you know, sort of a partnership. And I can't go to the buyer and say, you know, or my ad team rather and say, ah, I just gave this guy more margin just because I like him. I like a lot of people. If I gave pay bumps to people I like, I'd give pay bumps to absolutely everybody on the network and I'd get in a lot of trouble. We can't do that. There has to be a concrete reason as to why you're asking for the bump. So it's a fantastic question. Here's what you do. You tell me or your distribution manager, Taylor, Amber, or Henry, I can do X amount more if I get X amount or Y amount more on the offer. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to be scientific. We need a ballpark figure. Worst comes to worst, if you say, Henry, I need 10 cents more on this offer and I can generate an additional, let's say 20 calls a day. Perfect, now we're talking. Now we can look into it if it makes sense for us. And hey, to be honest, it probably would. If you give us an estimation like that, we like 20 more calls. We want more calls all the time. Maybe we can handle a 10 cent you know, hit on our end. That's fine. Uh, also, we need to make sure that you're going to follow through and say, okay, yeah, 20 calls per day. That's great. Uh, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up something like, you know, you can get a bump on this offer. If you do 20 more calls, we're going to re, you know, reevaluate in maybe three or four days. And we're going to look and see if you increased. If you maybe you increased, you know, maybe not 20 calls a day, but 15 calls a day, we might be able to make that work. If you didn't increase at all, or you maybe increased by one or two calls a day or something like that, we may have to drop you down. 
That's the major factor where we're looking for rate increases for partners is estimated volume increases. Even better, if you can give us tiered estimated volume increases. So if you tell me, Henry, I can do more volume if with 10 cents, I can do 20 more calls a day. If I get 15, I can do 50 more a day. And if I get 25 cents, I can do an extra, you know, 75 calls a day, something like that. Oh, oh, I wish you guys could see my face and how excited I look. Even when I say that to myself in a hypothetical situation, that is absolutely fantastic. Please send us those kinds of emails. Obviously, we'll reevaluate and we'll and we'll chat about it and see if it's realistic. But if you have a good idea as to how much more you can do with a rate increase, let us know. That is a fantastic question. Thank you very much. Okay. So oh, we got lots of questions. Lots of questions. Uh, okay, guys. So we're just going to keep going on to the next slide, and then I will get to questions at the end of the webinar, just because there's there's so many. This is great. Everyone's paying attention. Wonderful. And there's no there's no questions saying can we get a new webinar host. Woo! That's good. I saw that on my first webinar, but thankfully it was just Mike joking around, but that's always good to see. So tracking, how does it work? This is something that I am comfortable talking about at a basic level, but if you actually asked me to sort of code you up a tracking platform, I would probably jump, jump out the window. I am not a coder. I don't understand you know, the absolute specifics, but I can tell you roughly how it works. So with the CPA, I mentioned a little bit about pixel-based tracking. Distribution partners are given their own unique link from an affiliate network or from you know, a buyer or whatever. Uh, in my opinion, it's, it's a little complicated. Um, sometimes the pixel doesn't fire. Sometimes the line of code gets placed in the wrong spot. I mean, it usually works. Obviously, it, it does work. Otherwise, there wouldn't be you know, giant CPA networks out there, and they've been around for, forever. So it obviously works. Um, but I always found it a little tricky. Uh, there's always you know, issues with cookies or time zone differences or something like that. But really, I think what it comes down to is I think it's just because of the pure amount of volume. There's just so much out there that, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot more things to deal with, you know, with 10,000 people, you know, clicking on an offer a day versus, you know, 20 people calling an offer a day. It's really a, a matter of volume, in my opinion. And, and you know, I, I sort of compare it to something like, a, you know, the launch of a website or something like that. Um, you know, a lot of you will... Uh, you know, we'll, we'll know this better than I do, but my buddy's always talking about IP5 versus IP6 or something like that. Basically, the internet was not originally built to have thousands or millions of people logging on to a site at the same time. And you can see this all the time with, you know, big launches, you know, with Xbox or, or PlayStation Network or, you know, Xbox Live or PlayStation Network or, you know, oh, I'm going to sign in. I'll give you an example recently with uh, Cineplex uh, is the Canadian movie theater chain up here. And that, uh, you know, they're selling Star Wars tickets already. You know, may the force be with you. We're really excited. So my girlfriend and I luckily got in early and got our tickets two months in advance. Yes, I'm a huge nerd. But like two minutes later, when, you know, the millions of other people tried to log on, the system crashed. You know, the system was working fine and tracking just fine, you know, when there was, you know, maybe 100 or 200 people. But that instant influx of thousands of people can sometimes cause problems. So keep that in mind when you're running CPA off. Paper call is not pixel based. It's all based on the phone number. The phone number is absolutely key. That is your, basically that's your lifeline to making money. You need that phone number. We'll give you that phone number. If you're approved on one of our offers, uh, you'll be given up to 10 what we call promo numbers, and we can actually give you additional ones if it's necessary. You have to ask us about that. Uh, but but that's, the, that's the tracking link. Our system, uh, we work with Invoca. Invoca will see that somebody has called in to a service on your phone number. And that's how the tracking works. It's all connected to the phone number. If you're having trouble and you don't think a campaign is converting properly, please reach out to myself, Taylor, or Amber, or just try switching up the promo number. Um, sometimes that works. Uh, maybe the you know for whatever reason your conversion rates dipped. People are weird. Sometimes they don't like the look of a specific phone number. You know they like numbers that repeat so that they're you know um, you know they're easy to remember. Uh, you know my you know my mobile number I got because I get four numbers in a row. I love it. It's easy to remember. I can tell everybody. So the number is key along, and I should mention this as well, duration, hours, and geos. Duration we already talked about. It's the connect duration that you are concerned about. That's the one that, uh, that you're going to be paid out on. But hours and geos are really important. So it's not like CPA. This is uh, maybe you know sort of a disadvantage of paper call versus CPA. CPA, there's no one really at the helm. You don't need someone you know, constantly monitoring um, you know, the site or the form or whatever. But with paper call, you absolutely need somebody to be by the phone. So you can't just sort of 
pick up and talk to a robot that doesn't I mean I know you can talk to Siri but for our purposes you know buyers want you know live agents you know callers want live agents we need to make sure that potential callers are going to be talking to somebody real and that means they actually have to be there most of our campaigns or a lot of them anyway are 24 7 so this isn't something you have to worry about but a lot of them have regular business hours 9 to 5 8 to 6 10 to 7 something like that if a call comes from outside the hours given, even if it goes over the duration, you will not be paid for it. You could have just, you know, even if you left a voicemail and the person was a, a good lead, it has to be within the hour. So keep that in mind. Same thing with geos. A lot of businesses can't, you know, um, sort of cater to, you know, the entire country. Thankfully, we do have a lot of buyers that do have nationwide coverage. So a lot of our campaigns are, you know, nationwide in the U.S. and sometimes Canada. But pay close attention to the geos because if you drive a call from, let's say, uh, California, but the campaign doesn't accept Californian traffic, then it doesn't matter how long the call was or how good the quality was. You know, maybe they left a, a very long voicemail or something like that. It won't count for you. Keep that in mind, please. There are also additional tools uh, that we can allow you to track calls and append different parameters. Uh, like keywords and landing pages so you can kind of see which ones are working better. That's that's absolutely possible. Just give us a shout. Again, you want to reach out to Henry, Taylor, or Amber, something like that. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so we're getting near the end of the presentation, and then we will go into questions, and there are quite a lot of good questions. Thanks very much, everybody, for staying. We almost made it. Let's keep it going. Psychology and philosophy. Oh my goodness, Henry, that sounds really boring. No, 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 come back, come back. I promise you, this is really, really cool. So for me, paper call is a little easier to understand and explain. It's also easy to kind of get in the mindset of a potential customer. With CPA, you know, you have a, a huge amount of people at their computers all day. So I feel like the potential for high volume is there for sure. Uh, you know, products and services like downloads, toolbars, um, you know, diet stuff, um, some dating stuff, all really, really important because to be honest, sometimes people don't feel comfortable about talking about certain things over the phone, but also you don't really need to call somebody to download something, you know, a toolbar or a new app or something like that. You really need to call somebody. So CPA is great for that. But with paper call, if you're ever wondering, man, how am I going to promote tree service? How am I going to do that? Okay, well, it's pretty easy actually to get in the mindset of somebody who might need tree service. What is probably the number one, you know, question that people get about trees or, you know, the one, number one problem rather that people have with tree service? I got to get rid of it. You know, there's maybe there's, you know, a storm going on and I have a tree in my front yard or maybe there's a big stump. I don't want my kids tripping over or maybe there's some, you know, some trimming that needs to be done or maybe there's a branch that's hanging over a power line, something like that. There's a number of different ways that you can promote this offer. And to be honest, you don't really need to know all that much about the offer at the beginning. You can just look at it from a caller standpoint. Why would I ever call in about tree service? Then you can start doing some research. Start thinking about angles you can play. Start thinking about hooks. Hey, are you okay? There was a storm recently and you're in, you know, in the, you know, um, in the Georgia area. Make sure you get all the trees cleared up. Something like that. Call this number to get a service. Something like that. You can use that one for free. I'm not going to charge for that one, by the way. So that's really important. That's why we feel paper call is better for things like home services, like I mentioned, plumbing, tree services, that kind of thing, but also financial. I don't know about you, but I am not an expert in my own finances. I should be, but I'm not. I would feel very comfortable if I could call somebody and if they could walk me through certain things, like my student loan. I would have loved to have been able to call somebody about my student loan. I remember I went to university in New Brunswick, and I had to go back and forth between the post office and the and you know the registrar and the university and then back to the post office. It was a nightmare. I wish I could have just called somebody. That's why we feel it's really important. Same thing with tax. Same thing with credit. Hey, I'm calling in about my credit, but I don't I don't really know too much. Not a problem. We'll be able to walk you through your credit. You know, and they'll start asking questions, that kind of thing. That's always really important because you know sometimes forms can be a little intimidating. You know, especially when there's a large amount of information needed. And you're just going to be like, oh, I just need to talk to somebody. Somebody needs to walk me through this. So something like that. All right. And the future. Why should I care? Well, I did a little math. By 2018, I didn't actually come up with these figures, uh, the first line, but I did the second line. Uh, so in a couple of years, by 2018, uh, mobile search will drive an estimated 78 
billion calls to businesses. So uh, that works out to uh, a total uh, 296,000 years if an average call lasts a couple of minutes only. And most calls last a little bit longer than that. So that is a lot of time being spent on the phone. I mean, really, that's, that's almost every person in the, on the planet making you know, 10 calls a year, something like that. Absolutely huge potential. Now we're starting to see, you know, maybe we can catch up to the CPA numbers. You know, maybe we can provide, you know, services to, you know, people all over the world. You know, currently Ring Partner only does, you know, uh, USA and Canada, but I mean, we, you know, we're always looking to expand and, and get to new markets. So there's really, really exciting future there. Also, I would recommend everybody check out our YouTube video for calls, call only ads rather. Um, now, Mike Williams did host it and he's not as exciting as me. That's true. But he does know a lot of information. In fact, he's speaking at a conference as I speak. Um, so call only ads basically don't require a landing page. People are going to go on their phone, search for plumbing, and the plumbing ad's going to pop up right there, and there's going to be a prominent call button that will just connect them directly to the buyer. They don't have to go to a landing page or anything like that. So I'm going to keep in mind, to get approved for Google, you will still need a landing page. So just make sort of a you know bare, bone one, bare bones one with relevant content. And make sure the phone number matches your ad text and your landing page. I should mention that. Whatever promo number you're going to use, make sure it matches. Because if there's if there's a different number from ad text and landing page, Google will likely deny it. So keep that in mind. And questions. So I should mention that the budget for the webinar obviously did not include any special effects or a makeup person or a hair person. Because dear God, it looks like I just rolled right out of bed there. Uh, so I do apologize for that. Uh, but there are a lot of good questions, uh, so let's get to them right now. Can offers be incentivized? That's a good question. Uh, for paper call or at least for Ring Partner, no. It does work for you know some offers like with gaming. Uh, I know there's quite a bit of incentivized traffic and things like that. Uh, but for paper call or again, sorry, and sort of associate us with paper call as a whole with Ring Partner, no, that's not going to be allowed. If you have a uh, you know a promotion method that may seem uh, you know a little outside the box or or something that you know maybe you're not sure if that's allowed, please 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 call us or give me an email and we'll talk about it. Um, you know there's you know this industry is really built on you know creative changes and thinking outside the box you know with different promotions and things like that. And at first they sound you know maybe you know a little scary or a little shady, but uh, oftentimes those are the ones you know if they get you know approved by the buyer and we talk about it. Those can yield the best results. So if you ever have a promotion type that you're not sure about, uh, let me know. Okay, so we've gone over a couple of questions here. Da, 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 da. Uh, da, da. Ah, here's a very good question. Can I use multiple local phone numbers linked to the number assigned to me? Yes, you can. People love the idea of local numbers. They don't necessarily like the idea of calling a sort of if they're in, you know, Minnesota, they don't necessarily like the idea of calling, you know, a call center with a New Mexico number, something like that. They like something local. So for sure, you can absolutely do that. And uh, for the person that asked me that question, make sure to contact me, it's Henry at Ring Partner, and I'll walk you through the steps. But yep, you absolutely can. As long as as long as it gets routed to that promo number, you can go ahead. Keep in mind that promo number it has to get redirected to that promo number, otherwise you will not get paid. All right. Here's a really good question about Craigslist. Is Craigslist, are Craigslist postings rather, uh, are they good traffic or should I somehow filter the calls first or do your numbers do that for me? That's a really good question. So we do get a lot of requests about Craigslist. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky, it's a tricky beast. It's finicky. Uh, for some kind of campaigns, it works great. For other kinds of campaigns, buyers don't want to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Most of the time, the default setting for campaigns on Ring Partner will be no to Craigslist. However, if you feel that it will work well and you already have your create or your Craigslist ad made up, send that in and let's talk. I want to make sure that it works out for the buyer. I want to make sure that they're comfortable with it, and then we might be able to do a test. So it's not a it's a no, but not necessarily a, a firm hard no. Thank you very much for that question. All right. Oh, man, so many guys. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, I'm just trying to think of this one. Can you show an example of creatives? This is a good question for sure. So sometimes we get this, uh, you know, this question, you know, especially when we're walking through the process of getting approved for a ring partner campaign. 
uh, you know, we'll tell you, well, we need to see creatives. And, you know, someone new to the industry might be like, well, what? I don't know what that is. Or I don't know what a creative looks like. Or, to be honest, a more likely example is an experienced user will say, well, I don't really know what kind of creatives the buyer wants. That's an excellent point. I would recommend going to the Ring Partner uh, uh, All US Campaigns list. Check out the following campaigns. Check out Live Links and check out Locksmithy. Locksmithy in particular is a good example of the kind of creatives we're looking for. Um, you can see it. You don't have to be approved on the offer. You can just go to the campaign overview and you'll be able to see an example of the landing page. So again, it's going to be clean. It's going to be. It's going to have relevant content to the offer and it's going to have a phone number prominently displayed. That's basically it. If I may recommend, I would say try to make your landing page one page only. Definitely don't make the user scroll to find the phone number and don't make them scroll to find the relevant information. If you know you have it like a, you know, a page long, but maybe there's like you know some contact information at the bottom or maybe some extra info at the bottom, yeah, that's fine for sure. But you don't want to sort of create any artificial roadblocks for potential callers calling in. You want to make sure that they know exactly where they are, that where they need to be, where the phone number is, and what am I calling about. Super important. All right. For sure. So we got a great question uh, about uh, you know the tools for tracking keywords and things like that. That is an excellent question, and I know a lot of people want to make sure they track that. For sure. I won't be able to go into you know full detail right now because to be honest, we probably need a webinar on it on its own. Uh, but you're looking for ring pools. Uh, ring pools. There's a, there's a video on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com/ringpartner, and look for the ring pools video. I believe Mike hosted it. That will get you through what you need to do to set up ring pools. It's a little old, so it might be a little dated, but the first thing you'll need to do is contact your affiliate manager, your distribution manager rather, and ask to have ring pools enabled. So uh, definitely the person who asked that, definitely check that out, and please uh, email me, henry at ringpartner.com, and we can go over it a little, uh, a little fuller, maybe over Skype or over the phone or something like that. That's a great question. Who took that beautiful photo? Well, then you are being very generous, uh, whoever asked that. Uh, but that was Chris Neal. Chris Neal took that photo. He, uh, you'll notice that it's uh, on a bit of a downward angle. That's because Chris is uh, probably the tallest person in our office. He's about 6'4", uh, and he is our biz dev team lead. Uh, a heck of a guy, and he's got a great beard, too. So there we go. Okay, guys, uh, I'm really sorry, but it looks like our time is up. I've got to get going. Uh, thank you all very, very much for attending the webinar. This will be recorded, and uh, I'll see if the PowerPoint presentation can be made available to you. But in the meantime, please follow us. Uh, our Twitter handle is at RingPartner. Uh, you can find us at YouTube, youtube.com slash RingPartner. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, give us a call. Give us an email. We'll be happy to chat. Um, you know, very, very pleased about, uh, you, know, uh, you know, joining uh, joining the webinar. Uh, if you had any questions that didn't get answered, uh, not a problem. Just give me an email. It's henry at ringpartner.com and I will be happy to help. Thank you all very, very much, and uh, have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.